I welcome you very warmly, and please don't be afraid, I've brought lots of hammers with me today, but nothing will happen to anyone, it is not an anaesthetic, it is a totally normal wooden hammer. With a wooden hammer you can work on certain things, what with a metal hammer would not be possible because it would cause damage, why? Wood is elastic, it gives by, it is softer as metal, rubber as well, like this rubber hammer to beat out damage on cars, well not really nowadays with plastic bodywork. For metal it is perfect and for many other things. The most used hammer is naturally the metal hammer and that's what it is all about, it is very hard and hardness that is a thing. Hardness is a very important element, a very important characteristic from materials. When we want to know how hard a material is, then we have to find that out. And how do we find it out? I can, for example, hit onto this mouse pad, and as you can see, it jumps. The hammer springs back, it is soft, that tells us the experience. Shock absorbing material like under a washing machine, that is not as soft. Metal, that is hard, that we know, that is aluminium, here is marble, it sounds differently. When now I hit wood, it sounds alike, but you notice it is soft. That is not enough for us. For example, a cogwheel and a gearbox, when asked to live long and have little wear, then I need a very big surface hardness. Inside is something different, but that must be very hard. But how can I determine how hard a material is? How hard it is? That works pretty simply. Just take a look here. Here I will hit it now with the hammer. And as you can see, we have hit a proper hole into it. The penetration depth is a measurement for the hardness. Okay, you say I will hit my shock absorbing material, but that doesn't work anymore. Why? Because it cushions it always, comes back up. I can feel a little dent in it, but it isn't that what I want. I should basically, when it is penetrated, measure that deepness. With metal it works too. It cushions too, but a certain deepness stays. With stone that doesn't work at all. I can naturally hit it hard and it breaks, but I don't want either. So then I must have a measuring device to determine the hardness. There is connection with hardness and brittleness. As we know, glass is very hard, but I cannot bend it. But metal I can very good bend. As you can see here, it springs back, but I can also form it forever. Rubber I can bend too. That are materials which are not very brittle. Glass is very brittle. You can make glass harder, as you know, with spectacles. You can make them extra hard, that they don't get scratched that easily. All of these things are important, and we need devices that objectively the hardness of materials which we have in bearings, in shafts, materials that slide over each other, to protect materials, to determine this by concrete for example, and this you do nowadays with different measuring instruments, which are specially thought of for certain materials. There are also some which can be universally used. When I am on the way and I see that bridges are getting built and roads getting built, houses too, it is also important to talk about quality control before the materials are used as well as afterwards to determine if the concrete corresponds to the guidelines which are needed and with concrete it is relatively easy. You can measure it trouble free with a device like this. That is the HT225A from PC. It has a scale and is dimensionless. 
Only does it spring inside. It would be tensed and then the bolt is triggered. And this sensor here at the front comes out and strikes like a hammer onto the material. And because of the penetration deepness I become a measurement which I can configure. So one kilo is a hammer, but not much objective as the hammer I usually use. I have brought here a plate with me. It isn't concrete, but as long as the surface is flat. There's also a grinding stone with it, with which I can make it flat. If this is not the case, there's a special gels, which you can put onto the surface. Uh, one more thing, you shouldn't do any measurements next to each other. There should be a minimum distance between, depending on what material, and on one location it should not be repeatedly measured. Natu naturally, you must measure more times on different places. Normally, man says 16 measurements are required, and you'll take the top three values away, and the bottom three values away, and then the 10 values left over, you take a middle value, that means adding them and divide through 10, and then you have an average value. So now I will show you how one measurement works. I push the device simply downwards, tension the spring, and the bolt is triggered. And that is all. I have here at the back a button, when I have done the measurement, I have to push the button and then I get it shown. I will show you again. So, and now, for one, the bolt stays inside. And I have here a measured value on the scale. So, now I have to turn it around. And on this dimension free scale, I have a value and I can read it. And on the back of the, I have a table, I can use in this dimension free scale, read the hardness in kilogram pro squared centimeter. This measuring device can determine the degree of hardness of materials in the area of 100 to 600 kilogram pro squared meter. And works with a constant energy of 2200 joules. It is not a toy, you should be careful using it, but an important tool to determine concrete hardness. Here I have something very nice from PC, the PC2500, a device to determine the material hardness. It can in, I'll turn it on, in seven different units be measured. And you can calibrate it yourself. There's a calibrating body delivered with it. When I show you it, and at the top you can see there stands 787HLD. That means that must the device show so that it is 100% exact. But what is 100% exact? Something like that we have nowhere. I'll try it now and you can see how it works. Very simple. I just push this down and now it is ready. And the tension, as you can hear, that is the impact principle. Here springs the hammer and when we look at it, it shows 782. And now to compare, 787, so a minimal difference, which you can naturally calibrate, but such a difference is still in the tolerating area. So now we know it measures exactly, it has, as you have seen, a wonderful display, and I have different menu points which I can set, but I don't want to bore you with them. I just want to show you that on different types of materials it is possible quickly to determine the hardness up to 940 HV. 
So, as we have heard, we don't have the jump in here, but we have a different hardness, it is a softer material. It shows us 408, 408 HL, and here I have an aluminium plate, we can try it here too. It still has a dent from my hammer try. And when I try here, I load it and let go, and you can hear it, doesn't jump so oft. And we can see a hardness of 277 HL. So we have here a relative soft material. I have to say something to this though. The measurements which I do here, they are wrong. Simply because we do it in a studio, on a studio table, with a glass table underneath. Even if I have a wooden plate as a base, but the material must be at least 3 millimeters thick. And we don't have that here. I can also take thinner materials, but I must take a paste or a gel between it and the specimen should have at least 3 kilogram weight and then also less when you put a gel between it. All of this I do not have in the studio, I only want to show how it works and how simply with a device like this PC2500 it is to measure. It saves the measurements, also I can call them up later, and built in as a power pack at the top is a mini USB connection. Using this you can load the power pack back up, and you can put it into your trouser pocket and go to the next working site and test if everything there is ok. It is really a small device, which is very efficient. Here I have from PCE, the DSD, a hardness testing device which is very simple to use and it has the possibility, using at the top this slot, to put in an auto electronic adapter to connect a PC to it. Then you can transfer the shown data to the PC either once through query or continuously that it can write with it. You can have more information from the device, serial number and things like that. So in the operating is very simple. I put onto for example here and I become straight away the hardness shown. When I go to the next material is a scintillating board. Here I become something and then shows me the wood. And here I become directly the actual hardness shown. It all works here at the front, there's a small pin. It is pushed in so far as the proven material it lets, till it lays on the surface here. And the degree of counterforce, because the pin is sprung inside, the degree of counterforce is converted into the hardness so the DSD, a small handy device, battery powered, which means I can load it back up. More you don't have to say about it, because works so self-evident, even simpler as a coffee machine. Three devices I've shown you today, all from PC. One is the HT225A, a testing device which you can simply test the hardness of concrete with a very high impact force, a high measuring area and when you have done a measuring row with 16 measurements then you know exactly the result because the result has a very good exactness. Then the PC2500, this little device which you can actually put into your trouser pocket but it is also a priceless help to determine hardness. It is simply tensioned and triggered and you have straight away the result on the display. Saves also the results. Phone results with 900 data records are allowed and the last device here in a row that is the DSDA from PCE, a measuring instrument which I can also attach to my PC and can transfer every single measured result to the PC and sends continually the data to the PC. It works without a hammer or number of impacts, alone through the pressure of the pin on the underside. 
The last two devices are battery powered and therefore universal applicable. So that's all I think you may have watched with interest. Because hardness is a theme which not necessarily comes up in our daily life, even though it is present everywhere. Goodbye.